So if you're always shooting in auto or manual mode, there may be a whole world of different types of photographs that you can capture just simply with your camera that you're totally missing out on. So what we decided to do today, just for a couple of hours, is shoot using some of the fun creative filters on the camera and just try and see if we can capture something totally different. So if you've never used these creative filters before, then there could be a whole range of different types of photographs that you're missing out on. They're gonna be called lots of different things, ranging from different camera brands to camera brand. They may be called picture styles, creative filters, fun effects. There's so many different ones and different names for them. Now, all you need to do is have a look through the menu system on your own camera. On this little mirrorless one here, there's a range of different options that we can try out. There's what they call toy camera effects, there's miniature styles, there's color splashes and partial colors. There's lots of different variations to it, but have a look on your own camera, see what there is available. And what we're gonna try and do is just give it a try and see if they're you know, just a gimmick really, or if they're actually worth the hype. So the first effect we're going to try out is toy camera. Um, the idea behind it is that it kind of creates a, a shaded corner and a bit of a vignette around the image. So it gives it a slightly more lo-fi feel to it. Um, so we'll try it out with some landscapes and see how it goes. So you can see from the, uh, the camera screen at the back here, it's added a bit of a darker vignette around the whole edge and I'm sure it'll soften the shot a little bit. I've just had to change the aperture just to compensate for the bright sky. So what's quite nice about it is that it creates, as we say, this darker vignette around the photograph. It creates almost a, a period style of photo. So it looks a little bit older as if it maybe been shot on film or you know some sort of very old vintage camera itself. So it is kind of quite quirky. I think it's got its uses, um, but it's probably probably better worth trying with portraits, I would imagine, maybe more than landscapes, but it's a really kind of cool little trick to try out. So. I'd say, you know, that's kind of quite a fun one, but we'll move on to another and uh, see what comes. So the really nice thing with this little filter here is that obviously it saturates colour completely, as we said, but it really, really brings out the intensity, especially on a bright sunny day, such as today. All the colours that we actually see with our eyes, the camera is almost kind of capturing for us, which sometimes isn't always the case that when you take photographs on a nice day and you take them home, they don't maybe always look as rich as they actually, you know, you saw them to begin with and you have to tweak the sliders a little bit on Photoshop or Lightroom. So this is kind of doing it for us, to be honest, which saves a lot of time and effort when it comes to editing later on. So I quite like this filter. I think we'll, uh, we'll take a few more shots and we'll have a look at the results. So the next filter I'm gonna try is posterization. Now you may have heard of that already if you're a user of Photoshop. Um, and if you have used it, you'll probably kind of know the effect it's gonna give you. Basically what the camera's gonna do and the filter's gonna try and push all the colors that it sees within the, in the, in the frame to the extremes. It's gonna simplify them so you don't see so much range of color. Greens will just purely be one value of green. Blacks obviously be, just be pure black and therefore the sky just probably end up going white. So I don't know, I'm not really kind of expecting much of this filter, but I thought we'll kind of give it a try with the river here, the sky, the greenery at the front as well. We may get a few different colors. I'll say we'll give it a try and see what happens. So kind of, as I thought, it is pretty basic. It's pretty bland. It's like a very uh, low resolution image that's been kind of saved many, many times. And basically it's just degraded every time it's been saved. But I say it's something a little bit fun. It's almost like a pop art kind of style, but personally, not for me. So the next filter that we've not tried is called Aged Photo. So it's a little bit like kind of casting a sepia tone across a photo, which straight away gives me the idea that I think we need to try a portrait. So what I'm gonna do is just open up the aperture a little bit wider because it's a bit darker under this tree. And I'm just gonna get our model here just to kind of peer through uh, some of the foliage.
that's looking really nice already so it's kind of given us those sepia effects around the edges of the picture we can still darken it a little bit more in photoshop if we wanted to but i think that's a bit of a cool winner so one of the other creative filters that i've been desperately wanting to use on this camera is the miniature function so it works similar to a tilt shift lens if you've ever used anything like that before so it's effectively going to blur the top third and the bottom third of our image and actually on the camera here it breaks it down on the live view it shows us the shade of the areas that's going to be blurred and gives us the areas that are going to be sharp So the last effect we're going to try out is watercolour and I've been saving it to last because I think it's going to be really really quirky um, and to kind of honour that in a way I think we'll try a little bit of a quirky shot as opposed to going for uh, kind of level shots or low angles. We're going to go for a kind of a really really low angle and just look straight back up at this tree. We get a mixture hopefully of some of the cool greens in the foliage and then the bright blue sky. So the idea of this effect is that it should as you'd expect kind of replicate a watercolour painting that will look like quite smudge like the ink will bleed on it um, but let's give it a try and we'll, we'll see what works I'm gonna start working around about f11 so I'm looking back up towards the sky shutter speed of 200th of a second and an ISO of 200 so it's fairly low fairly small aperture let's give it a try a couple of seconds just to process it on screen but that's really nice the effect so it, it kind of has done was it what it said it would you know in in the way of kind of bleeding that color from the greens to the blues it's quite abstract actually if you're quite into a bit of fine art and abstract photography this could be a cool little feature to try out so there we go we've tried out six different effects with our cameras and even if none of them really appeal to you at least you've learned a little bit more about your camera and that can't be a bad thing at all anyway but what we'll do, we'll take a few variations of the different shots that we took out there and we'll put them on social media for you to see and tell us your favourite, you know, which one of the, the six that we tried was your favourite. Let us know in the comments below. Love to hear a little bit of feedback and say if you've been trying out the same effects as well, following along to this video, then send us your results. Again, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you can find us, just send us a, a link to your picture or post it directly. We'd love to kind of see the effects that you guys can kind of pull out on your cameras. They may be totally different and really inspiring to us. But either way, that's, it's just been a really, really kind of cool little experience. So I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please, please, please hit the subscribe button, turn the notifications on so you can find out when the next video is released ASAP. If you want to know more about iPhotography, then hit the link in the description www.iphotography.com and you can join up with the tens of thousands of students that already have worldwide and learn much more about photography so until the next time we'll see you soon